Hello everyone, and welcome to the THS video on analysing language in poetry. This is covered by the THS code EN.03, which covers all poetry aspects of the, of the THS website. Today we'll be learning about, about steel, peel, and how to revise poetry, and what central tenets Central tension is when two conflicting ideas within the poem and within the theme. So for example, uh, we could have humanity and nature, or love and war. The two conflicting ideas which tend to fight it out in a poem. The first thing we're going to look at is steel. Now steel stands for summary, technique, evidence, analyse and link. So today we're going to give you an example of where we'd use steel. So we're going to use the poem which from our Young Poet Competition of Summer by C. Higginson. The sun is hot as fire. The sea is as calm as ever. The sun is here forever. We hire a caravan and set off on our journey. We arrive late and jump straight into bed. Next morning we have ice cream and then ice cream. I have brain freeze. I lick the freezing ice cream and then it melts down my throat. Seagulls glide past. Silly summer seagulls. Easy in the sky. Adventure around every corner. Show me the way. I wish I was a seagull. Doing whatever I want. Every day is fun. So, now we're going to demonstrate steel um, for the question, how does Higginson present family memories in the poem Summer. Well firstly we're going to write the S which is summary. So we're going to write Higginson which is the author's name presents and then the theme is family memories in the poem Summer when she uses uh, and now I'm going to use the quote silly summer seagulls which is an alliteration so I'm going to write which uses an alliteration to describe describe uh, amusement of the of the wildlife on holiday. I'm not gonna write now. Next we're gonna move on to E. Um just to let you know the T in that was the alliteration because the alliteration is a technique. Now I'm going to write the evidence. So she does this in the quote. Silly summer seagulls. Not how I've put that in quotation marks because it's at the text. So the next bit I'm going to write is the A, which is analyst an analysis. Um, so this suggests, so this is the explicit stuff that are a fond memory of her childhood. Uh, this implies that this is a close reminder of her family holiday that and is linked to spending time with her family. Now, to 
get extra marks, you get, we're going to pick out a singular word now. So I'm going to go for the word silly. So the word makes me think because adding personal response also helps gain marks because it's your personal reaction to the poem. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to I'm just going to write silly makes me think of playing by the seaside when I was younger and may suggest that Higginson is doing the same. Now we're going to use the L which is link or what we could do is we could add in another quote or explanation to help back up this fondness of the seaside. So what I'm going to write, I'm going to do this by writing she also does this earlier in the poem when she uses a let's think adventure around every corner so that is uses a metaphor to she does this in the quote adventure around every corner Now I'm going to use different words to what I used earlier because it shows I have variation in vocabulary so what we're going to do is we're going to write this implies a further happy memory and that she was excited by the attractions in her in the seaside town. Now I'm going to finish this off by using a link which is this links links back to Higginson presenting her family memories because it should read both explicitly which is out loud sort of directly and implicitly so this is what is suggested in between the lines because it shows her both it explaining her fond memories of going on holiday to a seaside town. The next technique we're going to look at is peel, which is very similar to steel and is also not exhaustive, which basically means you can repeat it, so P-E-A-E-A, -A -A, you know, for lots of different quotes. To, to show a peel, we're going to use another one of our young poet finalists, which, which is B. Brooks and his poem, The Window. I'm a window, cold on one side, hot on the other. Sometimes I feel like I'm not even there, as if people can't see, can see right through me. They point at me and call me names, like grass, lake or tree. They make me wonder, am I a window, a lake or a tree? Or could I choose what I would be? Am I a thing or am I just there? But people stop and stare. I'm not a tree. I'm not a lake. I'm a window. Here, just to wait. So, to show appeal, we're going to use the question, how does Brooks present the feelings of the, win of the window in the window? So, we're going to look at the first bit. We're going to write the P first, which is the point. So, I'm going to write, Brooks presents 
the feelings of the window in the court by using uh, Brooks presents the feelings of the window using a using a simile in the quote they point at me call me names like grass and tree Now I'm going to move on to the e, A, because we're given the E, which is the quote, and the P, which is presents feelings. So A, this suggests that the window faces outside onto a park or into the countryside. However, this may also imply that the writer is ignored and is upset by this. Maybe the window represents, or oh, maybe the window is symbolic of himself as he feels he is being overlooked this now it's not limited just to one point because to get the higher marks you need to write more than one point so I, maybe we could write another bit of analysis so maybe what else there the quote suggests that I think this may also be admission to the fact he uh, being in real life admission Admit admission. Admission, right. I mean bullet in real life. Now I'm going to link this back to the question, so this presents the feelings of the window because it shows that the window feels neglected and overlooked. So just to point out where all the different points are, so you got your P, So you got that bit. So I'm just going to highlight that. It's actually a point. The evidence is this bit. That's the countryside. Analysis is all this. And I'll link this bit. Because analysis is finding the deeper meaning. So that is how you use steel. Three, maybe four quotes. So I've got a technique that we can use, which I learned off a very wise English teacher a few years ago. So first you write the name of the poem in the centre of the of the page. Today we're going to use those philosophy. The first thing you write 
is the type. So in this case it's about love, so new love. So you write the theme mainly of the poem. Next you write the central tension, which as we know from earlier is the two conflicting ideas. So in this it's love and reflection, single paired up, nature, humanity. Then you write a quote, the three quotes and with them you write a picture that makes it memorable. So in this we have the mountain kiss the high heaven and waves clasp each other and the fountains mingle with the river and the oceans and the rivers with the oceans. Now I haven't done a third one because that normally comes from the tricky bit. Now the tricky bit is the part of the poem which is really hard to understand. Each poem has one and it's hard and if you're in an exam you mainly need to focus on the easy bits and get the trick and use the tricky bit to get the higher marks. Now the final bit you'll write is the links. Now this poem I've linked to two other poems which is Sing a Song and Porphyria's Lover. Now you could do if you do this for each of the poems inside your anthology and then just try and memorize the pictures because then as soon as you see the picture You'll, you'll have a linked response between the picture and the quote.